stronger, you better go back to that gym and keep on pumping them weight and get good and ready because you're going to need it. Coming to Jimmy Golden, uh, Jimmy, certainly we see uh, why you're upset because of the incident at the weigh-in. Uh, this particular match, you did defeat Jerry Stubbs, and uh, as you brought out, it's uh, unfortunate that it was a non-title match. Well, that's true. I just wish the people could see the weigh-in that we had. Stubbs, you goofy idiot. I could have been over the 225 limit, but no, you didn't give nobody a chance to see how much I weighed, so that's all cut and dried. I'm going to get my title match, brother, and we'll be on to you when I do. Now, right here, he, instead of paying attention to me, he's strutting around showing his big muscles off, but that ain't going to do you no good, Daddy. The tide's going to turn here in a minute, and if people's going to see that I can beat Jerry Stubbs, I will beat him every time I get in the ring with him. Jerry, uh, excuse me, Jimmy, I think as we watch this tape, the ironic thing is, had Jerry Stubbs have left his hands off you this morning, had you waited and been one pound or a half a pound over the limit, he wouldn't have had to have wrestled you at all, which is what he's expressed the last couple of weeks. But now, regardless, without the way in, he is forced into a title situation with you. That's right. I got my title match. Over the limit, under the limit, whatever it is, brother, I got the match. And Jerry Stubbs, I'm going to whip your butt, boy, like you ain't never had it done, like you getting it right there now on that television camera. You're going to get it better than that. You're going to pay for this eye, these stitches I got in my eye. I'm going to give you some just like it on both eyes if I can. And right here you can see I'm wearing him out pretty good. We've had a knockdown drag out. We're both tired. And we both, Stubbs has started out bending the rules a little bit. So I figure it's my time to bend him, son. He's getting a little taste of his own medicine. How do you like it, Jerry Stubbs? Feel good? Of course, as you, uh, Jimmy has mentioned, uh, he is in control of the match at this particular point and uh, completely dominating offensively as Jerry Stubbs uh, is on the run. Well, uh, right here, this now he's behind me. He's shoving me in for a roll-up. He thinks he's got the pin. He got close to it, but not quite close enough. I'm trying to kick him, keep him away from me here. I'm going to get back up to my feet. Now here I'm throwing him in, tried to monkey flip him. He hung and trying to get on top of me, but it reversed out the other way. I came on top and counted his shoulders down for one, two, three. And there's your winner, ladies and gentlemen, right there on the floor. Jerry Stubbs, any time, baby, any time that I can get in the ring with you, I'm going to show you what fighting's all about, boy. I want you to go to that gym and get ready. All the people here know my reputation. I'm the meanest, grossest son of a gun that's ever been here, and I'm going to show you, boy, who is number one. I'm going to show you what I can do. It's know-how, Daddy. It's know-how. Comments of uh, Jimmy Golden. That situation takes place at the way in. We uh, decided not to show that particular piece of video tape. All of that should have come in Southeastern Wrestling. We'll be back in just a moment. February the 19th, Birmingham's Boutwell Auditorium at 8 p.m. A super tournament title lineup. 11 matches in all. For reservations and information, call 320-6163. And here's your lineup. The world junior heavyweight champion, Les Thornton, puts his belt and title on the line against Norville Austin. The Alabama state title at stake as new champion Mr. Saito defends against former title holder Bob Armstrong and a one-night tournament for a 1980 Corvette automobile. And here are your first round on pairings. The Tennessee stud battles luscious Johnny Valiant. Jimmy Golden takes on Jerry Stubbs. Fred Armstrong against Dennis Condry. Robert Gibson returns to take on Randy Rose. And former North American heavyweight champion Paul Orndorff against outlaw Ron Bass. Don't forget the world junior heavyweight title, the Alabama state title, a one-night tournament for a 1980 Corvette. 11 big matches in all. And it all comes together Monday night, January the 19th, Birmingham's Boutwell Auditorium at 8 p.m. for a super Southeastern wrestling card. We'd like to remind all you Channel 42 viewers there will be no Southeastern wrestling here on Channel 42 next week. But we will return on Saturday, January the 24th at 2 p.m. with Southeastern Wrestling. And, of course, coming up the 19th, Monday night in Boutwell Auditorium, two big title matches, two, uh, the Alabama State title, the World Junior Heavyweight title, and with me, Brad Armstrong and Jimmy Golden. They are two of the participants in a one-night tournament, the winner to receive a 1980 Corvette. Before we talk to Jimmy and Brad, let's talk to two other men involved in that tournament, Jerry Stubbs and Ron Bass. I can already tell that 1981 is going to be a very good year for us, Jerry. First of all, we come right there at the Boutwell Auditorium, Birmingham, Alabama. We get a chance to win a Corvette. And our first round, I get Mr. Paul Orndorff. Well, Paul Orndorff, you're no stranger to me. 
I wrestled you in 1978 all over the state of Oklahoma and Louisiana, and I'm going to say something that I ain't afraid at all to step into that ring with you, and I think I'm going to go all the way and win that Corvette, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got one Jimmy Golden. Well, this is one time it's not for the title, baby. It's for a 1980 Corvette. And let me tell you, when the first round's over, there won't be no Orndorff and there won't be no Golden. <laughs> we'll be wrestling in somebody entirely different. Brad, I know how you like sporty cars, and of course, here's your chance to win one on the 19. Yeah, I'm telling you, that's a that's a very pretty car. I saw the picture of it. It's uh, it's a nice looking vet. Uh, I'd like to have it. I tell you, it's a uh, it's been one of my dreams ever since I was a little kid. I've worn one of those, and uh, I noticed I've got uh, Dennis Condry in the first rounds, and uh, he's a he's a real tough guy. He's very tough. He uh, if I can get by him, it'll be a, a major step on my way. Good luck to you, Jimmy. You've got Jerry Stubbs more involved here in the Corvette. That's true. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I'd like to win that Corvette, but the main thing I want is to get in that ring with one Jerry Stubbs, as he says, and I'm going to tell you something, brother. You're going to pay for this eye. I'm going to get rid of you. You ain't going to win the car, that's for sure. Birmingham. Brief reminder, there will be wrestling coming to Citronelle, Alabama on uh, this coming Thursday night. The uh, National Guard Army match time there will be 8 o'clock. And wrestling on Friday night, Mobile's B.C. Reigns High School uh, Gymnasium, match time 8.30 on Friday night. I'd like to take a moment to talk to uh, luscious John Vagant, and uh, certainly in the mind not only of the promotion of Southeastern Championship Wrestling, uh, many of the wrestlers on contract here, but in the uh, eyes of the fans and in their minds is, why did you do to Ron Fuller what Because I felt like doing that to Ron Fuller. I am a very spoiled individual. I was raised with a silver spoon in my mouth. I've always been used to getting exactly what I want. I came down here for an explicit purpose. I was paid by a individual that I do not want to disclose at this time. And I, at this time, stuck my nose in Tennessee Studs business, if you will. But like I say, I had a fee paid to me and I am going to see the job done. I never get anywhere, I never do anywhere, I never do anything in my life until I see it through completely, you see. What we're referring to is uh, you, John, turning against Ron Fuller as a partner. No, you're and referring to that. And the team of uh, the no, Armstrongs in a recent Yeah, that, that, that's, that's, match, that's, that's totally insignificant, yeah. But I'll, 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 I'll agree with you at this time on that. That's totally insignificant at this time. What is significant, however, is the fact that I was paid by a certain individual. I do not want to disclose his name for my own purpose and his. I am here. And the second thing that I'll disclose, I'll go right on camera right now and say right now, put me on the record. You can take this to the bank with you, folks. I want that Southeast title. And if I don't get it, I'll be on the first thing smoking up north. And I'm going to tell you something right now, Mr. Ron Fuller, Mr. Tennessee Stud. All 10-minute time limit. Introducing in the corner to my left the 224 pounds from Oklahoma, Roy Welch. Roy Welch. His opponent at 280 pounds from Pampa, Texas, Ron Bass. Ron Bass. And the big Texan, Ron Bass, taking on Roy Welch. Welch giving up quite a bit of weight in this match, Les, but uh, uh, Roy's an outstanding opponent. Roy, of course, has to make up that uh, differential in size, a little speed, a little wrestling science. And the big man from Papa, Texas, Ron Bass, of course, a hard, mean, tough man to handle. Collar and elbow, jockey for position. Welch catapults across the spot with a tackle. Well, that's 285 pounds coming at you hard. Roy with a good scoop slam. Charlie, and goes for it again. Full slam on Ron Bass. And Bass backing off a little, lad. Uh, Trying to reevaluate his opponent right now. Bass doing something he's known for, giving his opponent time to think about his next move. And also, Bass has a way of getting a little psychological damage on his opponent by. Uh, backing off and staying in that corner. That's right. You know, at the uh, opening bell, Bass tried to intimidate Roy, and of course, I think that's a lot of the reason Ron backed off there just a moment ago. Uh, Roy opened up on him, moved right in, was the aggressor, and Bass had figured to intimidate him uh, verbally and was unable to do it. There you see Tommy Weathers pulling that uh, foot off the bottom rope. 
with the arm bar it's Roy Welch Bass coming to his feet now uh, he'll be looking for uh, some type of reversal some way to escape from the arm bar applied now by Welch Bass goes to the slam route but Roy hangs on still in command offensively it's Roy Welch Ron Bass unable to shake him free of course, you know, Charlie, after this match, uh, we're going to take a look at a gentleman coming to this area, North America, former North American heavyweight champion, Paul Orndorff. We're going to see him uh, in an arm wrestling contest against the, the big, powerful Ox Baker. Also coming up today on Southeastern Championship Wrestling Television main event, the Southeastern Tag Champions, Bob and Brad Armstrong, will take on former champions, Rose and Condry. That's right, Randy Rose, Dennis Condry against the Armstrongs, Brad and Dad. And of course, my mentioned is a non-title bout, but we, nonetheless, we've got it here, we've got it on television, and it should be action-packed. Bass, uh, Paul, uh, having a love affair with those ropes, isn't he, uh, Charlie? And for about the third time in the match, Les, he does go to those ropes as a means of breaking the hold. Right now, opening up against Welch, dropping that elbow across the neck. And of course, now, with Bass on the offense, you won't see him with those ropes too much. He'll be trying to keep Welch on balance. Pounding his man down now. Roy is trying to stay on his feet, hanging tough down to one knee. And those big hams of Ron Basses are doing the uh, damage as Roy Welch is staggered. Reverse neck breaker, and Bass brought him down hard on that one, Charlie. For the pin, two count, but Roy Welch powers out. Bass goes right back at him, and now it's Ron Bass pressing. Welch trying to stay in there, hanging tough. And Roy, with a good second effort, firing back. Beals Bass crossing, and the big man from Pampa, Texas, down. And Roy, up to that flying head trigger, nicely executed. And again, and misses it. Laid up on that top rope, and let's see what Bass is going from there. With the power slam, uh, error on the part of Roy Welch. He went for that uh, flying head scissors uh, one too many times. Bass sidestepped his man, and uh, there you see the power slam. The winner, the big Texan, Ron Bass. Let's just mention former North American heavyweight champion Paul Orndorff, a specimen of health. A uh, very complete athlete, Charlie. Uh, physically uh, well put together. The man's a uh, fast wrestler, scientific. He can battle with you. And we're going to see him in a different light, not in the wrestling ring, but in an arm wrestling contest as we watch this tape with Ox Baker. Here they come now. Both of these men have fantastic arms. You can just sense the power. Come on, boy! I got you there, don't I, hey? You feel that power in that arm? Huh? Come on, you better wait, wait, ho, ho. Come on, watch this hand. Watch this hand. Watch this hand, referee. Kirk. Now I got you, don't I, eh? Now I got you, boy. Come on, referee. Ho, 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 ho. Come on, watch his hand, referee. Come on, it. What? God! 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 I got it, my hurry, I got it! And there you have it, Paul Orndorff does it again. Did you ever see such power in your life? Paul Orndorff, still the champion at arm wrestling. Quite an athlete, Paul Orndorff. Certainly is, he's certainly going to make his mark in this area. But Charlie, I believe he'll be on the program with us next week, uh, and we'll get a chance to look at Paul Orndorff, the former North American heavyweight champion, in wrestling action. A lot of action coming up today on Southeastern Championship Wrestling. Don't forget that television main event, the Armstrongs against Rose and Condry, plus other exciting matches. Oh.
want to talk about the exciting 1980 Corvette tournament, a one-night tournament coming up. And certainly a lot of wrestlers are going to be digging hard to win this beautiful automobile, a very valued, valued prize. In the first round pairings, Paul Orndorff, the former North American heavyweight champion, will be coming to the area. His first shot as not only the Corvette, but one of the toughest athletes wrestling in this part of the country, outlaw Ron Bass. Charlie Platt is with him now. We're on a big night coming up for that 1980 Corvette. You have former North American heavyweight champion Paul Orndorff in the first round pairings. I can think of no way that I'd like to start 1981 off and winning that 1980 Corvette right there in Boutwell Auditorium. I got a stumbling block right off the bat, and that's Paul Orndolph. Orndolph, you're no stranger to me. I remember you from 1978. I wrestled you all over the states of Louisiana, Oklahoma, all over there. And son, you know what you've got in store for you. And Ron Bass is going to win that Corvette, and you will be going down, baby. Excellent first round pairings with more on that, Les Thatcher. With me, uh, Brad Armstrong, one half of the current Southeastern Tag Team Champions, along with his father. We're going to talk to Brad in a moment, but another young athlete who has made his mark in the professional ranks will be in that Corvette tournament. In the first round, that will be Robert Gibson. He'll be returning to the area. This young man is finally honed athlete. He'll be going after that beautiful Corvette, and his first round opponent will be Randy Rose. Charlie Platt is with him now. Randy? Well, we know one thing. Gibson, I've heard the name of Gibson before. There's one thing about it, Robert Gibson. I've heard of your brother, but you ain't gonna make no reputation off your brother just like Brad Armstrong trying to make a reputation off his dad. A new Corvette. Can you see the Rose riding in a new Corvette? I go, I'm gonna guarantee you right there in Birmingham, I'm gonna be riding in the finest thing that you people have ever feasted your eyes on. Randy Rose against Robert Gibson. First round pairings of the 1980 Corvette tournament. Also in first round pairings, one half of the Southeastern Tag Champions, Brad Armstrong. And of course, Brad, uh, not only are you going after this Corvette, you're facing one of the men that you and your father defeated for the Tag Team Belts. Now, you and I have discussed automobiles, and I know how much you like sporty cars, race cars, and certainly this Corvette would be a dream for any man age 6 to 60. Yes, sir, it'd be a dream come true for me to win a Corvette, but I tell you, we were real fortunate to win those belts from uh, Dennis Condry and Randy Rosen. I've got Dennis Condry in the first round. And hopefully Lady Luck will be with me again. And if I get by uh, Dennis Condry, then it'll be a big step on my way to win that Corvette. The 1980 Corvette, Brad Armstrong wants it. Charlie Platt's talking to the man. He's got a defeat to get to it. Dennis Condry, uh, you'll be going in first round pairings against a man who is one half of the Southeastern Tag Champions. You might say 1980 was a good year for Brad Armstrong. Rookie of the year, 1980. One half of the Southeastern Tag Team Champions in 1980. And now, he wants to drive a 1980 Corvette. Well, that's fine and dandy. But you're looking at one man he's got to beat to get into another final. And that's Dennis Condry. I need no recognition anywhere I go. Let me say this to you, Brad Armstrong, and you listen and you listen good. For a 1980 Corvette, I will beat anybody that steps in that ring because I like the car. I want to drive the car. It's a beautiful car. It's a big, black, beautiful Corvette. And Brad Armstrong, you will not ride in and out. Now with more or less Thatcher. Certainly any time Jimmy Golden and Jerry Stubbs would step into the squared circle, it's going to be an exciting wrestling match. But it's going to be equally exciting when the prize for that wrestling match is a chance at a 1980 Corvette. And Jimmy Golden, you've got that same Jerry Stubbs in the first round of the Corvette tournament. Now, that's true, Les. I want to tell you that I'm real excited about just being here in the southeastern area because the promotion, Don Curtis, gives away more money and more beautiful prizes like this Corvette than any other place I've ever been. And I'm just glad to be here, and I'm glad to get my chance. Win, lose, or draw with Jerry Stubbs, brother. I've got a little unfinished business with you. You see this eye right here? Don't feel good at all. And I'm going to tell you something. You might as well get ready to be expecting one upside your head because you're going to get it. If it's the last thing that I ever do, Jerry Stubbs, you're going to get yours in Birmingham, Daddy. I've talked to Jimmy Golden. Now here's Charlotte Platt with Jerry Stubbs. Certainly a lot of problems with you and Jimmy Golden of recent, and uh, I think it comes to mind that uh, there is a 1980 Corvette on the line in this match. Well, you know, it's a tournament, a Corvette tournament. A nice black 1980 Corvette. Well, let me tell you, I was in a tournament one time before in Boutwell Auditorium, and I went down right down to the finals. And you know I got cheated out of it, but this is one time I won't get cheated out of it. I'm going to ride in a 1980 black Corvette. Standing by with the Southeastern Heavyweight Champion, here's Les Thatcher. 
Ron Fuller's had a successful 1980. He's regained that Southeastern heavyweight title, and Ron, it's not on at stake in uh, the tournament, but certainly a very expensive, beautiful well, Corvette is. It's almost as important as any title. That's a $16,000 beautiful automobile like that. It's a tremendous prize. I don't know if they've ever seen anything like that given away ever in Birmingham, and I'd certainly like to win it. I intend to win it. It's going to take nine matches. It's going to take three times you're going to have to beat people and I'm in shape and ready for it and I'm wanting that car. And Ron's Fuller, the Tennessee Studs opponent in that first round is with Charlie Platt. It's luscious Johnny Bay. Well, I tell you what, baby, I don't need a Corvette. I don't need nothing else because I got a hot rod Lincoln myself. And I'm going to tell you something right now, Ronnie Fuller. I will on this given night here like a Corvette because if it means beating you and kicking you all over the place, I'm going to do it. And I'm going back up north. Back up north. Big shiny Corvette, big JV's gonna be right, right down funky, funky Broadway in a Corvette, Jack. Oh yeah! In Corvette tournament, you won't want to miss it. At a time limit, introducing in the corner to my left, a 225 pounds from Memphis, Tennessee, Norvell Austin. Norvell Austin. His opponent at 240 pounds from Japan, the Japanese destroyer Oki Shakina. Shakina. The man we call the junkyard dog, Norvell Austin against Oki Shakina. Should be quite a contest. Austin with the, the good speed, the science, and uh, Oki Shakina, a very wily veteran, built like a fire plug, close to the ground, a hard man to handle, but uh, the dog, very tenacious. And he'll be out there scrapping. Collar and elbow now, and Shakina backing off not uh, happy the way they locked up apparently they'll go again Austin, drag takedown charlie we've got action and well austin quick arm drag takedown on shakina shakina trying to evaluate uh, his problems in the opening moments of the match back into car and elbow side headlock shakina with a hip toss takedown good head scissors by norvell austin and both men back to their feet We've got uh, neutral starting position once again. Collar and elbow, top wrist lock, uh, double wrist lock by Shakina. Austin switching into that hammer lock. And Shakina goes for the ropes. We have a break. And back to a standing position. Collar and elbow over on the ropes. Tommy Weathers calls for the break, and we have a clean break on the part of Norvell Austin. Shakina moving in again now. And he comes up with the headlock on this encounter. Applying the pressure here. And goes to the windpipe of Norvell Austin, cutting off that all-important air supply. And again, Charlie, Sakina opening up a bit now, not being quite so leery. Do you were mentioning earlier uh, about going out there and going with this man, uh, knowing his moves, but wrestlers may wrestle each other many times in the course of the year. You can't go out with the same battle plan each and every time. You've got to uh, go in there expecting someone to change directions on you, someone to come at you offensively in a different manner. So uh, maybe this is the reason Shakina opened up uh, just a bit leery and was hesitant to really go into uh, his whole offensive thing until just now. Okay, Shakina continuing to apply the pressure to Norvell Austin, the junkyard dog looking for some means of escape. Uses that elbow into the midsection. Smart move by Shakina. Steps in as Austin comes off the rope. And of course, while we're watching the action here, we might remind the fans once again of our great television main event. It is a non-title bout, but it is the Southeastern Tag Team Champions, Bob and Brad Armstrong, against the former title holder, Shakina, going again to cut off that air supply, the foot across the throat of the junkyard dog. Referee Tommy Weathers backs him out, and Austin with a shot to the midsection, and another spins Shakina around. Norvell makes his move now to try and take over the offense. Shakina stops him again, and the Wiley veteran is a tough one to handle, Charlie. Okay, Shakina. And we see using those fingers in the throat. The dog coming up slowly. Shakina with the front, front face lock. Junkyard dog fighting back. Ooh, Shakina clotheslined him there. And let's see what Achu and Austin still in this one as he bails out on the count of two. 
Martinez takes his man in. A duck by Austin. Flying body press. This could be it. That is. That's been a good move for Norvell. It's uh, been one of his strong suits. It's, uh, it came up well for him. He got the three count in the win, Charlie. Well executed flying body press by Norvell Austin. Your winner of the match, our television main event is...